she wanted my heart valve donation while I was pregnant. Alina, your mother-in-law did what? My best friend Cameron's voice trembled with disbelief and anger as she held my hand tightly. What was supposed to be the happiest time of my life expecting my first child had turned into a nightmare. The argument that erupted had been intense, but nothing could have prepared me for the shocking request that followed. As I stood there amidst the chaos, wondering how we could possibly navigate this, a mysterious stranger entered our lives, promising help in ways we could never have imagined. Faven and I had been married for three years, and our relationship was solid. When we found out we were expecting our first child, it felt like a dream come true. We were both excited, and so were our families, or so I thought. My mother-in-law, Janet, had always been a bit overbearing, but I never imagined she would go to such lengths. Faven's family was complicated. His father had passed away when he was young, leaving Janet to raise Gavin and his two siblings alone. She was a strong woman, but also controlling and manipulative. Despite our differences, I had always tried to maintain a cordial relationship with her for Gavin's sake. It all started at a family dinner. Gavin and I had announced my pregnancy a few weeks earlier, and we were finally beginning to feel the joy and excitement that came with it. Janet, however, seemed distant and preoccupied. Alina, can I talk to you for a moment? Janet asked after dinner, putting me aside into the living room. Of course, Janet. I replied, but the prehensive. She took a deep breath and looked me straight in the eyes. I need a favor from you. It's about my health. I was taken aback. Janet had never mentioned any health issues before. What is it? I need a heart valve transplant, she said bluntly, and you're the perfect match. My heart sank. A heart valve transplant. Janet, I'm pregnant. How could I possibly? That's exactly why you're the perfect match, she interrupted. Your body is already adapting to changes, and it would be easier for you to recover. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Janet, that's not how it works. I can't just give you my heart valve while I'm pregnant. You have to, she insisted, her voice growing desperate. Without it, I might not survive. Tears filled my eyes as I tried to comprehend the enormity of her request. Janet, I'm sorry. I can't do that. I have to think about my baby. She stormed out of the room, leaving me in shock. Haven found me crying in the living room a few minutes later. What happened? He asked, concern and etched on his face. I told him everything. His reaction was a mix of anger and disbelief. She can't be serious. That's insane. We spent the next few days trying to process Janet's request. Haven confronted her, but she refused to back down. The tension between us and Janet grew unbearable, and we decided to distance ourselves for the sake of our sanity and my health. One evening, as I was browsing online forums looking for support, I received a message from an unknown user. The message was simple. I can help you. Meet me at the park tomorrow at noon. I was skeptical, but something about the message intrigued me. I told Gavin about it, and he insisted on coming with me. The next day, we went to the park, unsure of what to expect. A tall, slender woman approached us. She looked to be in her early fifties, with kind eyes and a warm smile. Alina Gavin, I'm Dr. Rebecca Johnson. She introduced herself. I heard about your situation and I think I can help. How did you hear about us? Gavin asked, suspicious. I'm a friend of Cameron's, Dr. Johnson explained. She told me about your mother-in-law's request and your predicament. Relief washed over me. Thank you for coming. We don't know what to do. Dr. Johnson nodded. I understand. I've seen cases like this before. Janet's request is not only unethical but also impossible while you're pregnant. However, I have some contacts in the medical field who can provide alternative solutions for her condition. Dr. Johnson explained that she specialized in complex family dynamics and medical ethics. She had seen many families torn apart by similar situations and had made it her mission to help them find resolution. She suggested we arrange a meeting with Janet to discuss her options and bring in a medical professional who could explain why her request was not feasible. The next day, we gathered at Janet's house. Dr. Johnson brought along Dr. Michael Stevens, a renowned cardiologist. Janet was visibly agitated but agreed to listen. Janet, I understand your desperation, Dr. Stevens began gently. But Alina cannot donate her heart valve while she's pregnant. It's too risky for both her and the baby. Janet's eyes filled with tears. But what am I supposed to do? I can't wait that long. There are other options, Dr. Stevens continued. 
we can explore treatments that can help manage your condition until a suitable donor is found. Janet seemed to soften slightly. I didn't realize there were other options. There are always options, Dr. Johnson said kindly, and we'll support you through this process. The meeting gained the beginning of a slow, but steady healing process. Janet started her treatments and was put on a donor list. Although our relationship was still strained, the tension began to ease as she realized we were not abandoning her. Gavin and I focused on my pregnancy, attending appointments and preparing for our baby's arrival. The support from Dr. Johnson and Dr. Stevens was invaluable, and we were grateful for their guidance. As we settled into a new routine, a mystery began to unfold. Dr. Johnson started visiting us regularly, not just for medical advice, but also to check in on our emotional well-being. During one of her visits, she brought out something that had been on her mind. Alina, there's something I need to tell you, she said, her voice hesitant. What is it? I asked, feeling a sense of unease. I've been doing some research on your family history, Dr. Johnson explained, and I discovered something unexpected. My heart raced. What do you mean? Your mother-in-law's medical history is more complicated than we initially thought, she said. It turns out that her heart condition might be hereditary. What? Faven exclaimed. Why didn't she tell us? She might not have known, Dr. Johnson said, but I found records indicating that her mother had a similar condition. I was stunned. So, what does this mean for us? It means that there might be a genetic component to her condition, Dr. Johnson explained, and it also means that there might be other family members who could be at risk. The revelation sent shockwaves through our family. Gavin and I decided to undergo genetic testing to determine if we or our unborn child were at risk. The results were a mix of relief and concern. While neither Gavin nor I carried the gene, it was a stark reminder of the complexities of Janet's condition. Janet, upon learning about the hereditary nature of her condition, was devastated. She blamed herself for not knowing and for putting us through so much stress. But it also opened the door for deeper conversations and a path to healing. As Janet continued her treatment, we received news that a donor match had been found. It was a moment of hope and relief. However, the process was far from over. There were still risks involved, and Janet needed to be in the best possible health to undergo the transplant. During this time, Dr. Johnson revealed another layer of the mystery. She had a personal connection to Janet's condition. Her own mother had suffered from a similar ailment, and she had dedicated her career to helping families navigate these complex medical and emotional challenges. That's why I reached out to you, Dr. Johnson explained. I saw so much of my own family's struggle in your story. I knew I had to help. Her words moved me deeply. I realized that sometimes the people who help us the most are those who have walked a similar path. Dr. Johnson became more than just a medical advisor. She became a friend and confidant. The day of the transplant arrived, and the air was thick with anticipation and anxiety. Janet was prepared for the surgery, and we all gathered at the hospital, hoping for the best. Dr. Stevens assured us that everything was in place, but the waiting was excruciating. Hours passed, each one feeling like an eternity. Finally, Dr. Stevens emerged with a tired but relieved smile. The transplant was successful. Janet is in recovery now. Tears of relief flowed as we hugged each other. The nightmare was finally starting to come to an end. Janet's recovery was slow but steady. The successful transplant gained a new chapter in our lives. While our relationship with her would never be the same, it was healing in a way that none of us had expected. As my due date approached, I reflected on the journey we had been through. The support from Dr. Johnson and Dr. Stevens had been crucial, but it was the resilience of our family that had truly carried us through. Our baby was born healthy and strong, a symbol of hope and new beginnings. Janet, now in better health, embraced her role as a grandmother with a newfound appreciation for life. The tension that had once defined our relationship began to dissolve, replaced by a mutual understanding and respect. The journey had been tumultuous, filled with fear, anger and uncertainty, but it had also been a journey of discovery, resilience and unexpected kindness. The mysterious stranger who had come to our rescue turned out to be a beacon of hope, guiding us through the darkest times. As I stand here today, looking at my family, I feel a sense of peace, the challenges we faced brought us closer together, and the new beginnings we embraced are something worth celebrating. Life is unpredictable, 
but it's the love and support of those around us that make it all worthwhile. A few months after Janet's successful transplant and the birth of our baby Gavin, and I received an unexpected letter in the mail. It was from Dr. Johnson. Inside, we found a heartfelt note and an old photograph. Theodolina and Gavin, I wanted to share something with you. The photograph you see is of my mother, Cameron, who suffered from the same condition as Janet. She was an incredible woman who inspired me to become the doctor I am today. Helping your family reminded me of the love and strength my own family showed during those difficult times. Your courage and resilience have touched me deeply. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your journey. Remember, no matter how challenging life gets, love and support will always guide you through. With warmest regards, Dr. Rebecca Johnson. The photograph showed a young Cameron, full of life and joy, much like how we felt now. It was a reminder that even in our darkest moments, there is always light and hope. And sometimes that light comes from the most unexpected places. As we pondered over Dr. Johnson's letter, we realized the depth of her connection to our story. Her involvement wasn't just professional, it was personal. The mystery of her appearance in our lives was now clear. She had seen her own family struggle in ours and had felt compelled to help. It was a powerful reminder that the bonds we form, the kindness we show, and the support we offer can have lasting impacts beyond our imagination. Our journey with Janet's illness had brought us closer as a family, and it had introduced us to retainable people like Dr. Johnson, whose compassion and dedication had made all the difference. As I hold my baby in my arms and look at my husband and mother-in-law, I know that we are stronger, more united, and more appreciative of each other. Life's challenges have a way of revealing our true strength, and with love and support, we can overcome anything, and that is something truly worth celebrating.